I'm heading outside. When I'm outside, I love to talk to my clients. Looking for bugs and insects. And I love playing with my hula hoop. Have you ever played with a hula hoop before? Hey! <laughs> that was really fun. By moving my body, I'm able to spin the hula hoop. But how does the hula hoop spin? Do you know how a hula hoop works? Let's find out. How does it work? Hula hoop. To make a hula hoop spin around our bodies, we need to get the right rhythm. That was a bit wobbly. OK, let's try again. Got to get that rhythm. Here we go. Look, the hula hoop is staying up. Oh, it's a bit like a dance, isn't it? Can you do the hula hoop dance? But look what happens when I stop doing the hula hoop dance. The hula hoop drops to the ground. So why is it that when I move my body, the hula hoop will stay spinning in the air, but when I stop moving, it drops? The hula hoop keeps moving, partly because of a force called gravity. Gravity is a force that pulls everything on Earth downwards. But if gravity pulls everything down, how is my body keeping the hula hoop up? To find out what's happening, I think we need to take a closer look. When we play with a hula hoop, we move our bodies to make the hula hoop turn around us. Each time the hula hoop hits our bodies, we push it upwards. When something moves round and round in a circle, we say it has a centripetal force. The centripetal force our bodies make stops gravity pulling the hula hoop to the ground. So if we keep our bodies moving, the hula hoop will keep spinning and stay up in the air. really interesting. So gravity is a force that pulls everything down. But when I'm hula hooping, if I keep my body moving in the right way, then centripetal force will stop gravity from pulling the hula hoop down, keeping it up in the air. Centripetal force is a force that keeps things moving round and round. <sighs> Let me show you something. What do you think will happen if I push this ball? That's right, it will move forward in a straight line, like this. That's because when something moves from place to place, if there's nothing stopping it, then it will move forward in a straight line. This is called linear motion. Now let's try something else. This time, I'm going to put the ball in the hoop and roll it so that the ball is always touching the inside of the hula hoop. Is moving round in a circle. When something moves in a circle, it has centripetal force. But what do you think will happen if I take the hula hoop away? Off it goes. It's rolled in a straight line. That's linear motion. Let's see how I use centripetal force to keep the hula hoop spinning. And to help, I'm going to use my tiny special camera. I'm recording. Here goes. Whoa! It's like being on a really fast merry-go-round. Why don't you count the spins with me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Can you see that if I keep my body moving, the hula hoop keeps spinning? Oh, but that is just one hula hoop. What do you think would happen if we tried to spin lots of hula hoops at the same time? To find out, I'm going to film my friend Rachel spinning ten hula hoops at the same time using my special slow motion camera. It lets us see things that happen quickly, much slower. I'm also putting my tiny special camera on one of Rachel's hoops. So we can see things close up. OK, Rachel. Three, two, one. Spinning all those hula hoops at the same time. By 
moving her body, Rachel is making all of the hula hoops spin around in a circle, keeping them up in the air. And the centripetal force stops gravity pulling the hula hoops to the floor. <laughs> Can you hear the sound of all of the hula hoops clicking and clacking as they hit each other? When Rachel stops moving her body, gravity pulls the hula hoops to the ground. Wow, that was great! I loved finding out how a hula hoop works. What was your favourite bit? Do you remember the name of the force that makes a hula hoop go round in a circle? That's right, it's centripetal force. Did you hear the sound the hula hoops made when Rachel was spinning them around her body? Did you see on my tiny special camera as it spun around my body when I was doing the hula hoop dance? I love to play with my hula hoop outdoors. What else can we do outdoors? We can play football or go for a walk. I like to go camping. When we go camping, we need a tent gives us somewhere comfortable to sleep and shelter from the cold and rain. And when we've finished with it, we can pack it away. So it goes from this to this. But how is a tent made so that it protects us from the wind and rain? Do you know how a tent is made? Let's find out. How is it made? out how tents are made, I've come here to a tent factory. <laughs> this type of tent has a curved top and is called a dome tent. And the factory are making a dome tent today. This tent has an outer layer called a fly sheet and there are some ropes. These are called guy ropes and they help to keep the tent firmly fixed in place even when it's really windy. Shall we take a look inside? Inside the tent is an inner layer. It's the same shape as the outer sheet, and it's called the inner sheet. And down here is the ground sheet. It protects anybody who's sleeping in the tent if the ground is cold or wet. And look, this is called a sleeve. A tent pole goes inside the sleeve to hold the tent up. The poles go into these loops of fabric and this is a tent peg that will fix the loops and the guy ropes into the ground to hold it in place. The fly sheet and the inner sheet are made from a material called nylon. Before the nylon comes to the factory, it's coated in a special material called resin. Resin starts out as a liquid, but when it dries, it coats the fabric and that will stop any rain coming through. We say that it's waterproof. To start making the tent, the nylon is rolled out onto this huge cutting table. Dawn uses a big machine to roll out the nylon and cut each piece to the right length, building up lots of layers. Next, she rolls a giant sheet of paper on top, so she can draw the shapes needed to make the tent. Lots of different shapes, aren't there? What does this shape look like to you? I think it looks like a piece of cheese. And that is going to be one of the roof panels. Now all the shapes have been drawn, it's time to cut them out. The table has little holes in it which blow out air. It's like a flying carpet. It lifts all of the layers of fabric up just a tiny bit, so now Dawn can move everything around easily. Dawn then uses a straight knife machine, which cuts out all the shapes. Now it's time for the nylon tent pieces to be sewn into a tent at the sewing machines. First, the green fly sheet is sewn. Where two pieces of material are stitched together, we call it a seam. Once the fly sheet is finished, Dawn stitches the inner sheet together. Look, the inner sheet is yellow, and this part of the inner sheet is the door. The door is being stitched together with this material. It's called 
mesh. And if you look really closely, you can see that the mesh has lots of tiny holes in it. And those holes will keep insects outside of the tent, but let the fresh air in. And lastly, Dawn sews in the sleeves, where the tent poles go. But when the seam is stitched, the needle makes tiny holes in the nylon, and the holes mean the rain can get in. We don't want that. So to make the whole tent waterproof, it's brought here to the taping machine. As the fabric goes through the rollers, the tape is heated by really hot air. And this melts the tape so it sticks to the fabric, and this makes the seam waterproof. Now the tent is made, but it's all floppy. Do you remember what we need to help the tent stand up? That's right, tent poles. These tent poles are made out of a metal called aluminium, which is light, but also very strong. Each tent pole is made up of pole sections that can be joined together to make one long tent pole. Can you see the piece of elastic inside the poles? It holds the tent pole pieces together. Oh, I love the snapping sound of the sections joining together. Here we are, and when we want to put the tent away, we can fold them up again. Just like that. Now we've got everything we need, so let's head outside and put up the tent. To show you how this tent goes up, I'm going to film a time lapse using one of my special cameras. It will only take a few minutes, but when we watch it back, it will happen even quicker. There we go. I'm laying out the green fly sheet, then the yellow inner layer, where I put the tent poles into the sleeves. Up it goes! Wow! It's really starting to look like a tent now, isn't it? And once it's up, I put the fly sheet on top to protect the tent from the rain, before finally using the guy ropes and tent pegs to fix the tent to the floor. And there we go! A finished tent! I love finding out how a tent is made. What was your favourite bit? Can you remember the name of the material that's used to make the tent with? That's right, it's called nylon. Did you hear the sound of the tent poles snapping together? Snap! And did you see me build the tent on my special time-lapse camera? you go camping, you'll know how a tent is made to protect you from the wind and rain. And if you have a play with a hula hoop, you'll know how to use your body to keep it up in the air. Right, after all that, I think I need to lie down in the tent. I'll see you next time. There are lots of things